Hi everyone, it's Monique at Butterbee Scraps. And after I finished my um, charm tutorial series, uh, somebody had asked me how you create big chunky charms um, like you get or trade in swaps, like this here. Here's one example of one that I've made. So I thought I might as well do a fourth video in the charm series and show you how to put all the little beaded charms that we created in parts one through three together to create one large chunky charm. So the first thing that I do, I use a Tim Holtz swivel clasp as the base of my charm. This one here is the smaller size. I also gather a bunch of jump rings together. These are the Tim Holtz jump rings. And then I go into my stash and I just grab a bunch of different charms that kind of go with the theme of, of the charm I'm going to be creating. Here, there's no particular theme. Um, you can see I got a variety of gears, keys, feathers, hearts, birds and bird cages. I've also uh, grabbed a few of my own wire wrap charms out of my stash. And then several uh, different beaded charms that, that I've created. So I don't necessarily use all these charms, but it's nice to have a variety just on your desk to choose from rather than having to go and search through bins and everything like that. Next thing you're going to need are a couple of pairs of pliers. I use my chain nose pliers and my bent nose pliers. And I just use these for opening and closing the uh, jump rings. Now the last thing you're going to need is completely optional. Uh, but I find it's really useful in creating a nice even looking charm. And that's a stand to hang the charm from. Um, I actually use, uh, it's going to be hard to see this because uh, I zoom, I use this here which is just a stand that you use for hanging bananas in the kitchen. <laughs> so that's all I use. So I think the best thing for me to do is I'm going to change my camera angle because of course I'm going to want to use my stand like this and you're not going to be able to see anything. So I'm going to change my camera angle, come back and show you how to put something like this together. Hi everyone. Okay, I'm back and hopefully this camera angle will work well for you guys. Um, so the first thing I do is I take my swivel clasp, the base for my charm, and I hang it on my banana tree. And what this does is it keeps my hands free to work and hang charms on this. And um, it prevents me from having to lift it up just to make sure that I get a nice even looking charm. And what I can do is I can twist the stand, all that kind of fun stuff. Anyway made my life a lot easier. Then what I do is I start assembling my um, charm here by picking the... I start using largest. I go from largest to smallest uh, charms that I have on my on my table and I like I said before I don't necessarily use all of them. And this one here I actually want hanging off the bottom and I'm just going to use the jump ring that's already on this swivel clasp and it's going to be easier for me to put this on when it's not on the stand, so... I use my uh, bent nose pliers in my dominant hand, chain nose in my other hand, twist the jump ring like this, and what that does is it prevents this jump ring from kind of turning oblong when you close it up. And actually, if you do go back and forth on the jump ring, it helps to harden it and prevent it from uh, opening up as well down the road. So there we go. The other thing that I pay attention to when I'm making these charms, not only do I build it from largest to smallest charm, I try to evenly space similar items. For example, there's a green bead on this one and I have a couple other charms here using green beads and what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of space those evenly um, along the length of the chain. Same with the, the uh, pink, I have some pink beads. So all I do is I just start 
grabbing jump rings and I actually use the same color metal jump ring as the uh, metal charm I'm attaching. So this one uses silver wire so I'm grabbing a silver jump ring. Open it up. And I don't, sometimes I end up moving where I've put charms to so there we go. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to continue building this charm, continue recording, and I'll speed up the recording so you can see how this uh, comes together over time. see there's a bit of a hole right here so I'm gonna add a charm there to fill that hole and this is how I keep working around the whole charm keep filling holes building it up with more and more charms stop there so you can see that while I was making the charm there were some charms that I added took off um, 
and I, I do that uh, based on how happy I am with the symmetry and stuff like that. I'm still not entirely happy with this charm here. Actually, we could probably use a little bit more up here to cover, but um, I think it's pretty good and pretty even. So anyway, I hope this helped anyone who wants to make chunky charms. And if you guys have any questions, just leave me a comment. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.